so we've got our cloud service the cloud service is exposing that virtual IP address um, and into the cloud service we're going to add virtual machines but before we get to the virtual machine creation there's a couple of other components we want to consider first um, and the first of those is uh, network access if we just create virtual machines and add them to the cloud service they will be given IP addresses from Microsoft's IP address ranges they'll be given IP addresses they'll be given uh, DNS server addresses they will be able to access the internet but if you want more control over your IP allocations and definitely if you want to um, um, connect your virtual machines in Azure to your on-premise uh, environments later on then you need to create your own virtual networks and assign your own IP ranges so here uh, in the Azure portal if we scroll down we can access the virtual network section and you can see that I've got one virtual network created already but well, we're going to create another so the bottom left hand corner if we say new and we'll say custom create a virtual network now the first thing we have to do is to give our virtual network a name so we'll say test vnet the name needs to be unique inside your subscription we also have to select a location now uh, the, the cloud service I've created I place in Western Europe this Vena I can place anywhere and I'm also good but I'm also going to place it in Western Europe West Europe these uh, locations are important if I create a cloud service in North Europe and expect it to use the test Vena from West Europe well that's not going to work the resources that I create that I want to work directly together need to be in the same location. So both cloud service and VNet Western Europe. If we go to the next screen, we're asked about DNS services and VPN, VPN connectivity. Now, if we create our own VNet, we will be assigning our own IP addresses to our virtual machines, but we can still use Microsoft's DNS services. If we leave this DNS section blank here, when we create a VM, they will get a IP address from our range, but they will get a DNS server from Microsoft. If you want to use your own DNS services, then in here you can select a uh, name for your VNS server, your DNS server. Um, if a DNS server already exists, you can select it from the drop-down list. If it doesn't already exist, you can type in a name and type in its IP address. Once we type in a name and IP address for our DNS server here, then every virtual machine that gets an IP address from our virtual network will use this DNS server. Now this DNS server might be an on-premise DNS server if we've got uh, connectivity to our on-premise environment, or it might be IP address of a virtual machine in our VNet that's offering DNS services. So an example of this might be a, a domain controller that you deploy to your VNet that's running an Active Directory integrated zone. Now I'm not, going, I'm not going to worry about DNS services for now. We can always come back and add DNS servers later on. The second section on this screen is about VPN connectivity. And there's two options here, point to site and site to site connectivity. Site to site connectivity is a traditional sort of VPN where we link uh, our on-premise, in this example, where we link our on-premise uh, network to our uh, Azure virtual network, so all the machines can interact with each other. Point to site creates a VPN connection, but from a single machine. So we can have our development desktops, our roaming user laptops, connect directly into our Azure subscription over a point to site link. Now we've already uh, there's already a video on this channel that covers point to site connectivity uh, in Azure. It is well worth a look at, and in a later video we will be talking more about VPN access, including VNet to VNet connections. For now, I'm going to leave those boxes unticked and go to the next screen, where we can now start to add details of the virtual next net network address space for our VNet. Now we start off by choosing a starting IP address and we can choose whatever range we want inside here um, Microsoft would like us to use um, the private address ranges 
But if we have public address ranges that, that we own, we can include them in here if we want. Um, any address range you want, as long as it fits your addressing scheme. Now I'm going to use the 131.107.00.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.